Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. It is Wednesday night, but it's the Wednesday night of the week that we're celebrating as Holy Week this year, the week between Palm Sunday and Easter. I've been spending a lot of time recently discussed reading some of the arguments for what day of the week that Jesus died. Good Friday is the traditional view, the day before the Sabbath. We know the Sabbath is a Saturday. That makes sense. But there are other suggestions that the Passover, which was also that week, would have also been considered the Sabbath. And it could have been that he was crucified the day before the Passover Sabbath. And then what day of the week was that? And how does it work? When you're counting days, you know that the, 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 that culture counted days beginning in evening and then morning. So there's all kinds of ways to, to consider what day of the week it was. Well, it's a Wednesday night. And one of the options is to think about that it happened on a Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if, if I'm fully supportive of that yet, but I'm still studying. But then I realized it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what day of the week. The key is what was done on that day. What was Jesus doing on the day of his crucifixion? And I'd just like to share what we call the seven words from the cross to consider what was going through his mind, what was important to him as he was completing the task of dying for our sins on the cross and then waiting for the re resurrection Sunday to, to reveal himself in all glory. So I want to pray and we'll look at those seven words of the cross. I thank you, Father, for the way you care for us. I thank you for the plan of salvation that sent your son. I thank you, Jesus, for filling that plan. And I thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for guiding us in that plan. There are things in the scriptures we can't quite figure out, but you keep drawing us to you, to follow you with, through the scriptures, to know you the best we can, not to master what we can know, but to let you master us through your word. So I pray that you'll bless us as we consider the words of Christ and what was going on as he was nailed to that cross. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The interesting thing, we talk about seven different phrases that were made. The first three were a demonstration of his love for others. The first thing he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was considering the soldiers who could easily be called in the villains of all history. But if the person that they were crucifying was saying, Father, forgive them, let's not hold them in disdain. They were doing their job. And we know that at least the centurion recognized there was something unique, that surely this was the son of God, he said after it was all over. But his concern was for the soldiers, even as they were nailing him to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The next concern was for the thief on the cross. One thief was cursing him. The other third thief was defending him. And then he looked at Jesus and said, remember me. That's a great prayer when you're going through suffering like that thief was going through. Just call out to God, remember me. He, he, we know he does, but it's a good prayer to remind us that he does. And then Jesus said these comforting words, today I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And then the third uh, word of comfort to someone was to his mother and to the disciple John. Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. John was a relational guy. Jesus was concerned about what's going to happen to mom. Joseph has long died. We don't know where the brothers were at this point, his brothers, but we do know that he was concerned and he chose the disciple whom he loved, and he loved them all, but somebody that was so focused on relationships that he referred to himself, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loved, as he wrote his gospel, and he decided to call that, that young man to take care of his mother, so love for others, but as he was showing that love, he still was suffering, and we see that after a three-hour period of darkness, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I always think of this as an instant, but when I put it next to the three hours of darkness, I don't know how much that, how long this was a moment. What, what this is saying is there's a separation between the father and son. Never had happened before, will never happen again. But because he took our sins upon him, God had to turn his face away from his son. It was hard for God. It was hard for Jesus. And he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't say, Father. He said, my God, my God, 
and that this is spiritual suffering. We shouldn't think of the cross as just spiritual suffering. We also shouldn't think, think of the cross as just physical suffering. Both are real. But when I hear that he said, I'm thirsty, I imagine that if I had a crown of thorns on my head, nails in my hands and feet, and had been beaten, if I had suffered that much, I don't know if thirst would be my main concern. So I started wondering, why, why does he say that? I have another thought that I want to share. Jesus on the cross fulfilling prophecy. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? One of the reasons he did that is because there is a prophetic psalm, Psalm 22, that begins that, that phrase. Jesus was fulfilling prophecy by saying that, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But as I just found this verse that was pointed out to me, why did he say he was thirsty? Because Psalm 69, again, prophetic psalm, verse 21 says, and for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. To fulfill the Psalm 22, one prophecy, all they had to do was say it. To fulfill the Psalm 69, 21 prophecy, he had to prompt them to give him a drink. And it says in the gospels that they put vinegar in the drink. So he's fulfilling prophecy, even in the midst of his suffering. Jesus didn't let anything go. He he did exactly at all that was prophesied of him. And it's just amazing. Even in the point of his suffering, he is making sure that things are done according to the plan that the Father and the Spirit and he had come up with in eternity past. Well, the final thing that I want to see with the last two words, he's faithful through it all. In the midst of his suffering, he recognizes, all right, it's almost over. I'm going to declare that it's finished. I have won the battle with the enemy. I have paid the penalty for the sins of the world. And now God can look with favor on sinners as they believe in the Son and receive him as Savior. It is finished. The whole reason that he walked on the earth for that many years, his public ministry, it was all leading to this moment. And he says, it is finished. And then again, he uses the word Father. The relationship is reinstated, and he commits himself and his spirit to the Father. The best sign of faith is not how tenacious you are, that you forge ahead and grin and bear it, and you keep going. That's not faith. Faith is our response to the Father. It's our belief in him and committing ourselves to him, no matter what we are going through. So Jesus was faithful through it all. And what a tremendous, tremendous example to follow. But it wasn't just for an example. He was fulfilling the plan of salvation, that he would die on that cross. And thankfully, he was buried. And we're told on the third day, he rose from the dead to show his power over sin and death. I pray that you can experience that, the joy and the hope of Easter, the resurrection. I pray that you can Take some time to consider the suffering that Jesus did on your behalf, but know that it was for a purpose and that God is in the redeeming ministry, the saving ministry. He is reaching out and calling all sinners to him. Let me close in prayer. I praise you, Father. I praise you that your spirit does a work in our lives. I pray that as you call us, you call us to truth. And the truth is, Jesus, you said it to your disciples. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We're living in a hard world with a lot of hard things happening. We need to be connected to our creator, God, but we can know you as our Father, God, when we get to know your Son. Help us to find that comfort in a relationship with you and bless us as we continue to celebrate the events of Holy Week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless.